Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the test three review for Math 1033. I'm going to start with question number one. If you have your paper in front of you, you can go ahead and look at that where you've printed out the review or look at it in that little booklet that you purchased. But anyhow, I want to talk through that question for you. So let me bring you down with me to my clipboard. And I'm in my office here. We'll, we'll go ahead and look at how to work these problems. Okay? All right. Um, let me go ahead and get a, there we are. Okay. What these four questions involve. You're given an algebraic expression, and you want to write the expression in lowest terms. Here's what you need to remember. Okay, let's look at part A. To write an expression in lowest terms, what you need to do is you need to factor both the numerator and the denominator, and then cancel out any common factors. I'm not happy with 5 minus y. In fact, I'm going to rewrite that as the opposite of y plus 5. I always like starting with the variable. The denominator is OK. y minus 5 is OK. Now, if I want to reduce this to lowest terms, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the numerator. When I factor out a negative 1, in parens, that will leave me with y minus 5. Something I want you to remember is when you're factoring out a negative 1, what happens is every sign changes from what it used to be. That's what factoring out a negative 1 is going to accomplish. In the denominator, y minus 5 basically can be factored by just writing it as itself times 1. And at this point, you can see that the y minus 5s cancel. So we cancel out the y minus 5s. Those are common factors from top and bottom. A negative 1 divided by a positive 1 becomes a negative 1. And that's my answer to part A. When I look at part B, again, I'm reducing to lowest terms. What I want to do, first of all, is rewrite the numerator as the opposite of x plus 5. Let's kind of put it in the right order. The denominator, I have 4x minus 20, which is fine. Now, in the numerator, when I factor, I do take out a negative 1 again. I pull out a negative 1. In parens, that leaves me with x minus 5. In the denominator, I factor out a 4. That's my GCF. And in parens, that leaves me with x minus 5. The x minus 5s are common factors, so they cancel out at the top and bottom. And you're left with the answer negative 1 fourth, which is my final answer. Problem C. In the numerator, I have x squared minus 5x plus 6, which is a trinomial. On the in the denominator, I have x squared plus x minus 6, which is another trinomial. Again, factor first, and then see what cancels. In the numerator, my GCF is a 1, so nothing, nothing great happens, but you always look for a GCF first. And then what you do in the numerator, because it's a trinomial, you try to factor it as the product of two binomials. When this last sign is a plus, that means these two signs are always going to be the same as the middle. And it turns out this factors as x minus 2 times the quantity x minus 3. In the denominator, when the last sign is negative, that means one of the signs is plus and one's is minus, one is a minus. And the correct combination here would be an x plus 3 and an x minus 2. Sometimes you have to practice a little bit with your factoring. You can always foil these back out to make sure that you get the original trinomial. And at this point, we see that the x minus 2s cancel. My final answer would be x minus 3 on the top and x plus 3 on the bottom. And please remember, there's no more canceling. Don't, don't. Some of my students will come up and start trying to cancel out these x's. You can't do that because x minus 3 is an entire factor. x plus 3 is an entire factor. OK, my final question here, part D. Let me get it balanced. There we go. 
All right, part D, we have in the numerator c minus 7, which actually factors as 1 times itself. In the denominator, c squared minus 49 factors as c minus 7 times c plus 7. That's the difference of two perfect squares. The c minus 7's cancel. And notice what I'm left with for my final answer. I have a 1 in the top. And on the bottom, I have a c plus 7. And that's my final answer in lowest terms. So basically, here what I want to just kind of remind you about is when you're given an algebraic expression and you're asked to reduce it, what you need to remember to do is to factor the numerator, factor the denominator. This is a good time to apply your factoring skills. Okay, thank you.